Hi, this is Paul, and I am here today with Phil. Phil is the host for John and myself while we are in London during our European estuary tour, and I thought it would be cool to have a randos interview with Phil. And Phil said, well, let's do it tonight, so, or tomorrow night, and I said, or tonight, I guess that was this morning. <laughs> it's just been a big day. So, Phil, why don't we begin by telling us a little bit about yourself? Uh, yeah. So my wife and I host this house, um, is the something we do, we both have jobs, Sarah, philosophy PhD, I work in, for a property developer, um, but I'm, I'm interested in using houses to, to host people, I think that's, that's probably been a uniting thread in how I've, yeah, I was thinking like, there has been a coherence that has, like if, if I was to say, well, what do you believe, like, about the what's my metaphysic? I mean, part of it is there's a coherence that seems to have brought me to a, like, a passion for utilizing the domestic to do something. So that's what I do. But yeah, working backwards, I've met you. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, last night at the Oak Hill stuff, uh, finding other people, this rabbit, Warren, of uh, algorithmic uh, provocations where <laughs> Ended up at the uh, bearded Frisian. Um, <laughs> the bearded um, Frisian. Uh, yeah, so I guess, yeah, JVP to PVK pipeline is it partly why I'm here. Okay. Um, and then, yeah, it's just, I mean, it's lovely to host people. And I guess I'm, I, yeah, we could work all the way back. I mean, I'm very happy to, like, okay, well, do, a, your father, do a, a scene setting. Yeah, from, uh, your father, which I just met your and father. You met my tonight. dad, which is. Uh, he was here tonight. <laughs> random conversation. That's right. That's right. I, I usually don't meet people's father right before the Randos conversation. So tell me a little bit about growing up. And yeah. did you grow up here in the UK? Uh, so they're both doctors. Um, and um, I was born in Birmingham, uh, where you've been. Well, no, actually, actually I didn't, didn't get go. to Birmingham. Oh, alas. Um, uh, born in Birmingham, and then uh, we spent much of my upbringing in Malaysia, uh, where oh, really? my parents were connected with, with OMF, and I did some of my schooling out there, and then we came back. Um, your, your parents slowed down a little bit. Your parents were connected with who? Overseas Missionary Fellowship. Overseas Missionary Fellowship, um, okay. And, yeah, if I like... To zoom, yeah, it's, it feels like a theme recurs. So it's interesting that Labrie and Edith Schaefer and China Inland Mission are also kind of there speaking into a thread. But yeah, I was there, I went to Chifu in Malaysia and I do, I like, there's, there's definitely bits in my life where there has always been weird people going at great cost to tell stories in weird places. Like, and it like, mm. I feel like the, some of my angst of like what it is to exist in I don't know London or whatever or like is is set against this this background of a, a quite an enchanted like growing up in the jungle and quite an enchanted like just being brought up by people who'd like were totally sold out to go and be weird far away like for something so I think that that as much as anything. So that was that was a season in my life which was which was formative and and in various aesthetic ways magical and and so forth. Um, come back to my secondary education in London. No, not in London. In England. In well, in the so your parents yeah. were doctors, so they were yeah. doing medical mission work overseas. Uh, they were doctors. Uh, okay. Uh, in a university hospital. Uh, oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. And... Uh, which is mission work. Uh, 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 yeah, yeah. I think there but, are there are specific missionary hospitals. And this, I think there's... Right. There's interesting ways to... But, to but a, lot of the, a lot of the people that I talked to had parents who were, eh, maybe we went to church now and then. You had parents who were very committed Christians. Yeah. You had parents who were committed enough to take, um, in a sense, turn their back on the potential for lucrative jobs in the West and dedicate themselves to helping people who needed help in distant corners of the world. Yeah. yeah. And it's interesting to, it's interesting the, 
the therapeutic dimension of the uh, podcast interview. Like, no, I think there's there's a, a, a gift in what they have invested in terms of what they have sacrificed and demonstrated that has put into me a sense of the plausibility. So, yes. Well, I would say so, because, you know, we map, we, our, our parents map themselves onto us. We don't even... You know, we don't do that consciously. They just map onto us. And then that shapes your world. And that shapes your world in terms of this is normal, that the Christian life is one of sacrifice for the sake of others. And these are the institutions and the practices and the ways that we live out this faith. And you were a part of that. That's the, those are the assumptions that you grew up with. I mean, I, you know, in, in some ways, I was the same way. I mean, my parents were, in many ways, inner city missions. My father could have gone to other churches that would have been more normal, but they stayed in Patterson, and they did that. And that's a, that's a deeply formative thing in terms of religion growing up. And then, of course, I went and did overseas missions myself. So that's, that's not a small part of the story for you, that mm -hmm. you... Um, those are sort of your assumptions about life and faith and the Christian life. And you, you take that in at a very young age. Now, okay, so now you're coming back to, you're coming back to the UK to London for secondary school or to Birmingham? Yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah, back to England. I did secondary school uh, in Birmingham and then in, uh, at a boarding school. At a boarding school? Uh, yeah. Tell me about that. Uh, well, I did boarding school uh, in Malaysia, boarding school in Birmingham, and, and so I've never not done boarding school. But uh, well, that that yeah, doesn't. It's like Harry Potter, basically. <laughs> uh, <we'll play. laughs> it's like Harry we'll play Potter. Quidditch and uh, uh, yeah, uh, that was. I guess that's also formative, and I guess I, yeah. I, uh, so you were you're living in. I mean, a big part of this is so as as I described to some people. The way that this tour sort of rolled out, it's as if um, John Van Dock and I took a calendar and threw it at a bunch of people and said, fill it. And Phil stepped in here and said, they can come and stay with me. And for the, the people who are sort of piecing together London, that's like, because obviously getting um, space to sleep and live in London isn't the cheapest place mm -hmm. in England. And but we didn't know anything about this. And then via Phil's email, we begin to learn that this is, in fact, an intentional community. And so you living in intentional community now is not likely disconnected with the fact that you lived in boarding schools and you lived in community growing up. Um, yeah. Uh, um, I had a couple of thoughts. Um, I think so there's a few th one is living in intentional community and living on purpose yes. um, and, um, and I think there's something like whatever it is like, there's, so there's one thing that I, I have kind of come to think about my upbringing and then are now is that my parents having made an intentional decision to, to cross land and sea to be somewhere and to be sent by the church and to have a narrative around that is a is a peculiar luxury i think in terms of my ability then to articulate um, <coughs> the experience of dislocation and then relocation hmm. and, and and then there's there's a whole kind of body of literature around third culture kids and yes. of being there and being not there yes but the thing is i think everyone is dislocated to an equivalent extent hmm. they just don't have the kind of story to, to to tell that so someone who was born in um liverpool and whose father's job takes them to southampton they several ties like i mean we've just said in london like you can like there's people who move to bromley from here and like ah oh, that's they might as well have moved to 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 kind of mozambique like the 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 the, the distance is enough that you lose all ties and but by virtue of having a a form of sending and intention hmm. does does is is a luxury and i think uh, what i want is to be able to enfranchise other people to 
to consider what it has been to be dislocated and then to minister to a kind of almost hegemonically dislocated set of people by rerouting them and saying there is a gift of place, there is stewardship of place, there is there's something about being placed and then if you have the luxury of being permanent or semi-permanent then that's a gift that you steward and you can give away. So Sarah and I, and I can tell the story of this house, find ourselves in a luxurious position in a high velocity city to have had like this little eddy of, of, of relative stability and to steward that as I had it stewarded for me by, by Tony and, and the gift of that. Hmm. So there's there's the intentionality side of things. Um, in terms of boarding school and... The well, let, me, let me pause on the intentionality thing because I think that's a really good point. One of the, one of the points that Peterson, uh, Jordan Peterson likes to make about suffering is that um, sort of turning from prey to predator, which is a turn from, um, let's say, uh, receiving into intentionality and pursuit changes the valence of the, not necessarily just suffering, but the, the challenge, sometimes the trauma. And the point you just made about, um, John Verveke likes, likes to talk about domicide, the point you just made mm. about domicide and that domicide is widespread right now in the world. Mm -hmm. And it's widespread for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. It's clear for people, let's say, who are the children of divorce. Chil people over the children of divorce suffer domicide because, as Andrew Root says, this, this, this ontological foundation of their life is disrupted and they are gonna experience domicide. People who are living rootless lives, their grandparents live here, they live here, they move around a lot. There's a lot of people on the channel that have talked about that experience. They suffer from domicide. Um, some, many of us would sort of have an idyllic imagination of being rooted in one place, of staying in that one place and living our whole life in one place. And you've sort of taken this and said, well, we're back at it. Whoops. And this was, yeah. We're talking about intentionality and intentional community. And, and domicide. And what's that? And domicide. And domicide. So and I, I think I think I landed the plane on on the point that I was going to make. Um, and then you were going from, I mean, the fact that you pursued intentional community and in a sense that's a way to address domicide in sort of a petersonian way from from turning from being just the recipient of domicide to intentionally turning towards intentional communal living is that am i am i is that the point you wanted to make uh yeah uh, uh i mean I think I feel the world's, I mean, one feels one's calling where one feels the world's pain, and I feel the world's pain in that I'm able to articulate it, and I think for many people, they have de facto domicile, they just have no way of, they've mm. lost home, roots, community, but for no grand cause, or no one said, you're doing this, what a cost, how can we support you, and, and, and so forth, it's just, well, you know the bank moved us to the next city and mm. and that that is modernity and mm. and there is a sort of and yeah i think if you're able to if you're able to name it then you're able to grieve it and then if you're able to kind of apprehend it then you can subvert it and and redeem it right um, right and i i think it has been a sequence of accidents of circumstance including kind of kind of bumping into tony and kind of developing a life here that we currently have this this form of an ability to be go root deep here and mm -hmm. and in whatever ways we can kind of export it through the guest room or and, and through like yeah there's a sort of hierarchy of permanence uh, in that sarah and i are here for the the long haul yeah, uh, and then yeah. the other people who live here are here for the season they're here and you're here for the weekend uh, well well talk to me about tony and how you got into this place uh yeah i guess there's there's a there's a so there's there's boarding school um okay and and, and so then i mean it's interesting that there's certain plausibility structures about sharing space and like what what some people feel is okay and so there's boarding school and then i go 
up to Nottingham to study architecture um, and in terms of the circuitous route I, I go up to Nottingham having having spent some time in London working for an architect um, then starting my bachelor's finding finding a great deal of tension between what architecture is in practice, what it is in first year, and mm. what it is as an academic subject, and what the prospects are. And then also that intention with, like, my sense of, like, so go up to Nottingham, find myself in, in a church. So Trent Vineyard Church at Nottingham uh, is a phenomenal vision for the city, vision of church maximalism, vision like... If there are any refugees in this city, they're on us. Like, let's do this. Let's wow. let us do free shops. Let us buy out all of the railway arches and like upcycle furniture and like really be aggressive in a sort of sense of church's infrastructure. Like that really lodged in my sense of the possible of like having kind of floated through a form of kind of evangelicalism. I then come across something that's like we must really take responsibility for changing society in 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 a not a kind of totalitarian way but in a like super high energy way hmm. and that intention with a sort of uh, the, the sort of the strangeness of, of architectural education I then drop out of architecture because I think it didn't hang together I think I found myself disintegrated by those things in tension um, and this this, I think I, I began my podcast addiction at about, <laughs> oh. <laughs> at about that stage of, of like I listened to everything Rob Bell and Driscoll and uh, like any of those from 2005 huh. um, I definitely had that definitely like, I had a sense that ideas matter and um, and that you could do something that was catalytic through church um, but it didn't hang together so I, but I also found La Breeze podcast hmm. um, or La Breeze a lot of audio content from them alluding to this proto-monastic space where ideas were wrestled with and there was something about being amongst the cabbages where you 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 came in touch with the real real um so when i yeah it's it, halfway through that i drop out i go and spend two terms at english library and that was very very healing or like very reintegrating and i think mm. like a whole set of things from the candles that we had this evening as a theological mainstay to, to like, like it just there's a whole kit of parts that I think Libri has really honed in terms of how it stewards what is essentially a domestic space to do high high functioning holding and containing of a diversity of broken people at various stages um, into meaning making and, and, and stuff so then I, I then do that then I go back to Nottingham and finish and then and then so this is then 2009 I come down to London with a kind of my prayer is to like well, how can I take the, how can I find what I found there mm -hmm. in the city um, and it was entirely by accident that I met Tony at the back of church and Tony Tony's yeah this is Tony's house um uh, but and he was a, a like I was listening again to your thing on simple people um, or like and, and and he he did GCSEs and then that was it and and he he was um, he was aggressively non-academic and I think that was very helpful for me <laughs> hmm. um, and other things but like he he DIY'd a lot of this house he he bought this house when such houses could be built and he like having done. When such houses could be bought like this, probably at a reasonable price, you've got, you've got, um, there's a lot of, there's a lot of gentrification in London. Yeah. I think that's what you meant to say. He bought this house when it could be built, but. Uh, when it could be bought. Yes, exactly. Um, yeah, I, I, I think, I mean, one of the questions I'd love to sort of, in terms of you guys scaling estuary and you thinking about people like the the people who are finding Jordan Peterson and then coming to a, some sort of realization, or the stuff with like Tom Holland in the coming Dark Age, like stuff like that. Um, Literal Dark Age, because electricity is going to be too expensive for um, the English to light their homes at night. Um, what is it to generate community, and then what is it to seed houses under these conditions that, that hmm. sort of sneak under the radar? 
it was a, like the best time to do it was, I don't know, in the 70s when London was depopulating, you could pick up a, a house like this for 90 grand and now they're kind of a million or two million. Um, but so there was a sort of like, but I, I just don't think it was that calculated. I think he was someone who was sold out for like, just blessing, discipling, kind of in an old school way, quite disciplinarian, old school navigators, but like wickedly funny and like with a kind of like, and, and also like a, a vulnerable streak. I, mm. I, I found him like, and he was about half your height. I think he'd come up to your middle. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, I mean, and so he, he was a bachelor all his life. And, and then, yeah, this, this is the house that he, from the nineties for about 30 years, basically lived as one of 12 guys that lived in this house. Wow. And, and I, I ended up in, in here at a point where he was, um, he was developing Alzheimer's and yeah, I mean, he was, he was a complicated person, but like he'd just sort of given himself away and, and kind of in no high minded, like let's calculate a theology of intentional community, which I think I'm prone to do, like had just the person in front of him, like he was very much more the like, not loving the idea of community, but loving right. the person in front of him. And, um, and uh, yeah, and, and it, I, I think some of the rhythms of the house bear testimony to something that has been iterated and that works. Hmm. And so we are then the inheritors. So like I, I'm able to boast in this house without boasting in my great genius of, right. of but like it's something that has a has a good enoughness and a kind of like it can it can accommodate quite a quite a variety of weird people in weird life stages um and we just keep it going tweak it um so what was the question <laughs> well, it was a good it was a good run well I, I wanted to know who tony was and you gave a nice you gave a nice picture of him and how we did a we did an estuary meeting at a church tonight and one of the topics that was in the group that i was participating in was not you know unsurprisingly you know a group of guys who are talking about consumption of podcasts consumption of youtube videos this search for truth but we noticed that a lot of this search for truth is just sort of up here in the air and it sounds like tony was not working up here in the area he had all his models he had all his theories uh, you know there's there's a fair number of people around this little corner of the internet that just think and think and think and think and talk and talk and talk and talk it sounded like tony was the kind of guy who he's just going to do and then you can you can begin to work out the protocols the rhythms the rituals the liturgies in the process of doing because right there you have the actual laboratory where it's just trying to think all this and maybe apply and then think some more no you're going to do and do and do and you're going to develop those those liturgies and those ways of living together and then after he developed alzheimer's you sort of step in and are the curator of in some sense the monastic tradition I mean, there's not an order. There's not an order of Tony sitting around this house somewhere in a book. Here's the order of Tony. Mm -hmm. um, the order. This is this is much more of an oral tradition. Well, talk to me about some of the practices that that the house has that that sort of keeps the house together. I mean, you have prayer in the morning, seven thirty prayer, correct? Yeah, it's optional. I don't know that that's what keeps the house together. Um, in a code of like I think there's there's been a lot of prayer that undergirds what this house is um but um yeah the house tries to be quite ordinary and uh, like or at least at least I'm 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 keen for rootedness generally the domestic generally like people who like I there's so many of my peers who do not are not afforded this like they live in a similar house it's just cut up into four flats mm. and there's something in the just that social code of like or like the well one the kind of 
the leader who would break through the barriers and, and instigate living at scale, and then just the plausibility that that doesn't end in cult carnage and like um, <laughs> and otherwise and and that and that I think is way outside of some people's sense of the possible um, and uh, so there's there's that so we inherit this rhythm from Tony and some of what I think we have I think I think there's ways of doing houses like YWAM does houses and other people do houses where it is a ministry mm -hmm. and it's a program and and there's some houses like Labrie where it's therapy and it's subsidized and it's kind mm. of much needed and I, I like I bless YWAM to do what YWAM does and Labrie to do like I have derived huge benefits from from both in their in, like extensively from Labrie but it doesn't scale to the million houses that everyone else lives in right it, it has, it's this exceptional case and how do you without being nostalgic for some kind of return Twitter form of like the golden age where we sort of everyone was a trad wife and everyone had this like kind of whatever it was but there was something in what we have here in the architecture of what we have here that bears tribute to some sort of resilience from the 1800s where they lived relationally hmm. um, and I want for that fabric to be enlivened to do a rhythm of life within that that doesn't have to be subsidized and doesn't have to be full time but it actually gives a plausibility that you could raise a family be students whatever it is have jobs that operate in the real world mm. but you're you're enabled and and also you don't need to be like full benedict option like there's yeah. something about we're in the city we're for the city we're of the city we're a mix of people on a spectrum of belief and unbelief sarah and i steward it and try to facilitate something in which it's more than the sum of its parts but it doesn't the barrier to entry isn't a doctrinal basis hmm. it's participation and vulnerability and then the the measure of its success well is up for question but but it's it, we've tried to decouple spiritual, religious, uh, like presenting mm -hmm. from participation in being towards the house and allowing like the intensity of that to set up uh, full stack conversations about mm. where you're actually at in life. Um, and you so it's shared rooms. Um, so it's six bedrooms, one of which is a bedroom, uh, one, uh, the guest room, and then it's, it's two people in all the other rooms. Oh. Um, we cook on a rotor, so well, like two people cook for the whole week. They're responsible for feeding 10 people every day. They're responsible for stocking the inventory. And there's a, there's a level of responsibility for others and also the ability to curate a household at this scale for feasts, for like it's your, mm. you are then, it's it's... And I think, so Tony taught foreign language students to cook a roast beef. Like he, like he had a coded thing and like he, he, he was very, but like that same thing, like without a sort of um, fascination for roast beef per se, is a bit like what, like the side effects of it were, it, it raised people to have a sense of houses as being for others and you as like, it was interesting last night thinking about the cello and competence and a, and a, like a competence. You're talking about Christy Mayer's talk Christy at Mayer's the talk. Um, at the event at Oak Hill. Mm. Um, thinking about Christian competencies or like yeah. tacit knowledge uh, as a sort of it, 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 you build it into your body to know how to do it, but like. I, yeah, I had a question that I didn't quite know what to do with. I still don't know what to do with how you how you do that without elitism or whatever. But like, there's a, there's a there's there's all sorts of practical things that are to do with household management that I think are not not spiritual and are not not forms of creating part of the infrastructure at the cellular level of activated households which do the doing of resisting empire where otherwise we're all ordering Uber Eats. Hmm. Like the, the telos of where we go technologically is becoming more and more atomic, more and more dependent on the blob hmm. and forming the skill base of resilient interdependence has, has some really 
otherwise kind of on the face of it mundane things but it's how do you cook and stew at a household of 10 yeah. people and if you can take that for granted then you can you can build all sorts of other intermediate scaled resistant infrastructure hmm. Hmm. um so unglamorously and without any sense that we've arrived like i just think more people should do that we just have a head start because we've got like this is what we've inherited in which yeah. we can do that yeah do do the people who come in here to live now you mentioned that they don't have let's say a confessional foundation that you know, other, let's say, Mennonite intentional communities. We have Julian who lives, you know, he's a Hutterite. You have the Bruder Hoff. I mean, so the Mennonites have pursued intentional communities quite a bit. You don't have a, um, a doctrinal code or it isn't specifically religious. Those who come into the house, what's their motivation? Um, and what, what's, why, are they, why are they coming in if it's not religiously motivated? Hmm. Uh, huh. Well, to some extent, you could ask, you could ask them. Although this is a this is a serious question because I yes, they um, we tend to recruit by word of mouth. I tend to have to put people off coming, as it were. I tend to try to discourage people against the 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 rosy tinted sense of being in community is going to be lots of lovely people and they're all going to be exactly um, what it is. The everyone who comes to the house um, has to write has to write an application mm -hmm. um, and the analogy I would use is if we were a house for recovering alcoholics it would be straightforward what success looks like right. and why what A is and what B is and right. how you get from A to B and how the house helps you get there. Hmm. Um, but we're not a house for alcoholics necessarily. We are a house for a diversity of people um, and to a great benefit. Um, the rent is cheaper than it might otherwise be. Sure. There's no mortgage yeah. on the house. So like essentially we are this sort of year of jubilee standing outside of the market because like there's no, there's nothing leveraged on this plot of land and so i mean you could push the rent right down um uh but there's much to maintain and repair and otherwise so it's a cheap rent um so then the question the, the burden of proof has to be on them to say why why do they why do they mm. deserve to be here as it were yeah um and within the recruitment process we tried well, we don't have a beauty contest, so we don't have multiple people applying for one place at a time. Mm -hmm. um, one person will apply, um, and then they need to write what is essentially a proto-relational covenant, which is this is what this is what my A is, this is what B is, and this is why the nine other people and the kind of facility of the house helps me get from A to B. Hmm. Um, and and then that is their say, like I'm trying to like. I mean, like it's 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 fairly rudimentary like i'm trying to achieve this season of study and i'm also recovering from this past season of x and actually doing it in this context of community provides me with this and i'm excited to exploit positively this season at this house in these ways mm -hmm. um and then it's reciprocal in that there's nine other people who've said I'm here with these vulnerabilities or these hopes and dreams. Right. And that's, there's a like, like, it's like a, a one pager. It's not a, it's, and, and that is, that's the basis of their, the code of how they're kind of the user guide to me of like why I'm here, how I'm, how, how you can challenge me. Like it's, a, I don't, I, so I haven't really engaged the protocol of the, the thing, but there's, there's something about protocols where you, break the ice for people, you short circuit to giving permission to ask hard questions, which otherwise you have to circuitously kind of do a little dance beforehand. And yeah. that little dance could last for six months. Yeah. Um, and so I think that that has been an accelerator for people to own the house, exploit the house. Like I often use exploit in a post, like we've got this Ferrari of a house and I just want people to drive <laughs> it really fast. Like it sort of don't want it gathering dust in the, in the, in the garage. So, so there's that, the, so the relational covenant that people write for themselves and the rhythm of life, which 
has a lot of ostensibly pragmatic stuff, but which I think is the is the stable base on which you accelerate, um, yeah, forms of forms of intimacy and forms of kind of catalytic effectiveness in terms of what what people go from this place to go and do. Hmm. Hmm. So your um, you'd like to see others take up this challenge and and pursue you. <laughs> it could be you. Uh, well, well, you know. It sounds like, though, this isn't this is this isn't a small thing to take up. I mean, it's, you're going to. I mean, Tony started it. Mm. You've sort of maintained the tradition of Tony. Um, someone who starts this on their own is going to have to. I mean, you know, maybe someone who, let's say, has lived here has internalize the practices, understood the dynamics, they could potentially go out and start another one someplace else, having mm -hmm. learned what they've learned here. Mm -hmm. But someone watching this video on the basis of the uh, 30, 40 minutes that we've been talking, that's pretty thin soup to start something new. Yeah. There's, I mean, it's, it's sort of devastating that the bar for entry is a million pounds if, yes. if, you're, if you're a youtube viewer uh whatever it is you know. well if you're if you're living in well if you're living in a major city um it's you have the liability that the cost to get into a house is very high mm -hmm. but you also have the um the opportunity that there could be potentially a good number of people who Especially in the early years, could your rent wouldn't be as low, but maybe you can begin to pare down that mortgage. Um, on the other side, if you live in an area which is much lower, um, lower cost of purchasing a, purchasing a house, you can get into a house, but then you might not have the same demands of people. But you could, you know, there could be other things. If it's in more of a rural section, a more rural area, you could do. You know, you could do farming together. You could do, um, or you could do a whole bunch of other things. I mean, there've been many, there've been many attempts at pursuing communal living in a whole varieties of ways. And um, but, but you have seen yourself the the benefits of it. Now, now you're also doing this as a married person. That's yep. different from everyone else in the house is single, correct? Uh, until uh, well, until recently, there was there was another married couple. Okay. Um, well, what are what are those dynamics like? Um, yes, interesting. There's so briefly to the bit you were saying yeah. that, that, that before of people's done various things. There is there are there's the skills of leading it. Yes. There's the financial aspect, and then there's the kind of location and what the house right. fabric is. Right. And and there is a sort of there are those three things to solve for, and you have to get those three ducks in a row. Yep. Um, to the point of that, and then to the second question of the married couple. So for five years, Sarah and I have done it like this with another married couple here who um, have gone to do a different house in Cambridge. Um, uh, also, another communal is living house. Mm, mm. Oh, okay. Um, in a in a smaller and, and different shaped way. Um, I think this house of ten people works really well with two couples and six singles. Hmm. Um, but I'm sure there is a whole variety of family arrangements, etc. Like, so Labrie has families and kids and single workers as a sort of some of part like more than some of parts hosting a, a set of students and I, I think there's there's um but I, I wonder yeah I I don't know I, I, I'm right now dear YouTube viewer there is uh, <laughs> there is this vacancy of the couple who have vacated yeah. and and there is this like I guess my my question at this junction which is what I'm like have a random conversation to kind of try to think through or try to pick at that question is what how do you recruit for if the north star is trying to export a sense of the plausibility and viability of this rhythm of life at the point at of time where we have a vacancy what does it mean i still feel young and under experienced in so many ways but then also we've done this we've been around the block a few times i feel like we would have the capacity to 
much more asymmetrically mm. pour into someone and send them to like and to start to in a in what is what is very navigator sort of like that yeah. sort of discipleship of like yeah. but like not very programmed and, and like there has to be like i don't quite know what this house 2.0 looks mm. like because it's so weird um and so exceptional um and then to that kind of trinity of needing needing leaders needing cash needing the house itself um there are many empty nested boomers who are kind of stewarding hmm. fabric yeah like as an appreciating asset as the the diligent thing to do as a kind of a, 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 um an aging christian couple to 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 do so that your hmm. then millennial offspring can get a foot on the housing ladder hmm. by by liquefying that at the appropriate time to help them hmm. but in the meantime there's all that space and there's all that joy and coherence and yeah. like like so like it's so like i would pay to find people like you to come and stay with us like there's i have such a deficit of people of a certain generation hmm. who have like i just like it was it was um almost i mean in many ways to do with who tony was but also just how other he was by age and how 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 much he shaped what my sense of what it is to age and how it is to to be of that generation and what what it gave me something to think well when i'm that age i could be that what's the route to get there like mm. without that um so i just don't know how to get how to bring in that intergenerationality yeah. and the free son of of that and make it plausible that it's not only possible for it to be peaceful but for it to be fruitful because yeah. many people i mean many people have been inoculated against community housing by student housing and and the sort of the horror of kind of having to make it up on the spot with like desperately immature people and then you kind of at the end of your student experience kind of recover and sweat and never do it again and like kind of batten down the hatches to be kind of atomic with your own dishwasher and your own washing machine in in something where kind of nothing touches me hmm. um and so just chipping away at that and then trying to make bridges to particularly intergenerationality is is what i want to hmm. export to to bait the hook of something yeah, because yeah. just like i don't know there's plenty of like weird millennial projects doing weird crypto funded co-house hacker houses i'm sure huh. the bay area is absolutely thick with like people doing very stratified demographically forms of like short-term intensity but it's that kind of the durability of the steady state and the intergenerationality which i don't know the bruderhof do but how do you yeah. how do you do it virally and disruptively and piecemeal and accumulatively in the city hmm. starting in a kind of messy space yeah um and then how do we use what we have here to seed that hmm. and some of what we have is deep stability um and like phenomenal like network support from the navs who i don't know what the navs like the navs is such a diverse weird thing that it seems it seems hard to but it is it's a load of hugely generous sacrificial people coming alongside yeah. who hold me to account who who give i think if i would say how do you do this house have some someone that you're accountable to hmm. and i think most community houses are like no no we're gonna reinvent the wheel and then like you you one you create a demographic strata and you kind of raise the ladder up after you and partly you're like the precisely the sort of entrepreneurial vision that makes it happen kind of sets it up to either eat itself and become a cult or kind of dissolve at a point where it it isn't passing anything on or direct like it it sort of becomes a bit hermetic hmm. is my hmm. is my sense and so it has been a fundamental blessing as a diagram to have like degrees of disinterested people yeah. to to write through to people who are kind of intimately care for us as people who situate this as not a cult um and i think the guest room also helps it not be a cult um 
I get weird, weirder people than me come and stay and <laughs> check my check my weirdness. Are you are you calling John Van Donk and myself weird? <laughs> um, I've I've probably drifted us from the original question. Well, I, I think it was a good. I think it was a good. Um, I'd like to I'd like to return to this, but it's 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 getting late, and I am I am not at my sharpest after this very long day. But I think the topic is really good and really interesting. Um, I don't know what your I don't know what your bandwidth is. I might um, I might be able to upload this tonight and and get it out there because I, I would like to. I think it's a it, it's something I've not explored at all on my channel. Even though we do have, I mean, Julian is a, you know, he's an original rando and um, he is, he is out there and he will pick up on this video. I know Julian, who's, who's the Hutterite and um, your vision here is interesting. I don't know. In Grand Rapids, there was a, um, when I was in college or before I came to college, there was an intentional Christian community that, um, I was still going when I was in college. I visited it once, and I had some friends who, who lived in it. And I think it was in some ways similar to this, because it didn't have, you know, it it, it wasn't, it didn't pursue it as you know here as as sort of like a religious order. It was, I think, it was similar to what you've described. Um, I know another, I knew another house in Grand Rapids where it, that was more of a an individual sort of mentoring men to get their lives in order and get up and, and and get going. So I, you know, this has been very interesting and I think you've got an interesting vision and I like the fact that you are interested in um, encouraging the vision to multiply and for other people to try it. And you've got, you've obviously got some ideas about boomers and <laughs> multi-generational because you're right, and and especially in in a world right now where Job in the Netherlands called these things that are being built Netflix boxes, where you know it's you've got a kitchen, a bedroom, and a little room in which you are for the most part just going to watch Netflix. And I, I can see, I mean, I can sense that this particular community sort of has a light touch. You're not. You know, we are going to be down here for prayer at 7.30. We are going to, you know, it's not heavily programmed. It's a light touch. And, and I think that's, that's, really, um, that's really good and probably needed. So, but my voice is almost gone. I have been talking all day. And um, my, um, my energy is almost gone. And I don't know how long this battery, this battery's hanging in there. We, we filled the, I filled the, um, the card before which I didn't think I'd ever do but this video takes a lot more space than I thought but um, no I, I really like this and I really like this idea and you know John it's funny because when we got here the other night John was like oh this is really cool I want to you know I want to spend some more time here and our schedule's really full but you know I'm going to see Justin tomorrow and and John's like well I'll stay here and then I can kind of get a sense of this place and and I would like to bring John into this conversation because I think John didn't want to be in this conversation because I think he wanted to go to bed but <laughs> I, I would like to bring John into this conversation because I think John will um, continue to ask questions I think I suspect that for especially for couples who decide that they want to pursue something like this I mean obviously both both parties have to be deeply committed to it because living in a situation like this as a single is different than living in a situation like a married couple because a married couple not only has one and then two but the relationship between them which also requires maintenance and attention and and space it needs a community yes. space and i think i mean i i'm interested in the architecture of of how you i really want to let you go to bed but i really want to talk about it <laughs> but i i don't i don't take lightly that there is something around um that th 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 there's there's a order of magnitude difference right. in terms of how you as two bodies but one 
unit yes to, uh, like two wills two voices to like the uh, and uh, i mean the 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 jvp to pvk pipeline i like came for the jvp stayed for the marriage crisis stuff and i like and i really think that there's something about like dating in captivity and there's also something about like like what it is to household formation is is i think like plausible forms of household formation is is also an an exit from the like the cheetos basement like yeah yeah and, and, yeah, and, and yeah, that's giving great. a pattern that's really book, good a pattern book of steps that are like not not totally wild but also kind of antidotes to like essentially becoming like an uber eats couple in a netflix box kind of subsisting on on babel's like like mega structure that, that somehow and i and i and i put it to the church to some extent to to say well then you like to institutionally invest in plausible ways of de-risking household formation mm. by by kind of like it would be possible for the pension fund of some institution to take on a a form of compassion well it doesn't even have to be compassionate just sympathetic to yeah like if if we could show that we're cash positive and that relationally we don't like i don't know you're stable house, you don't blow up this house under its current formation has lasted five years which outlasts any number of other yeah. household formations um in its own messy way as it were but um wanting wanting to create pathways for people to merely take lodgers yeah. at, at a more like a, a steadily more ambitious scale um is is something that i i wonder that there is there's room for the church as institute to to use its intermediate clout um to to provide that infrastructure um i think i think you're really onto something i think you're really onto something i really like it it's really cool i'll uh, i'll prod john <laughs> so maybe maybe we can find yeah we we won't have we don't have a lot of time we might we might find some time again tomorrow morning um i have to find out i have to find my way to justin briarly's house so i'll figure that out shouldn't be too hard but anyway so let's let's um land the plane here and maybe this is something that we can pick up again and continue to pursue sound good all Thank right you, thanks phil